Hello, this is David with entry number 200-800-947 here in the apartment recording a um, somewhat quick law, law, uh, entry, sorry, entry today. Um, one of the uh, fascinating things about, I think, all cultures is how it is almost an innate desire to other almost an innate desire to other people who don't look like or who don't come from the same place as the native population and I really feel like that's been the case in America right that's been the case everywhere and in Japan uh, you better believe it's the same the same way and um, what I'm talking about isn't Americans or direct foreigners that come from out of the country into into Japan. I'm talking about I'm talking about people who have lived here for years, their whole lives. People who were born here, people who were, you know, who are Japanese in every sense that I'm American, but are denied Japanese citizenship. I think one thing that as Americans we take for granted is the inherent um, openness of our country. Sure, you might be afraid of Donald Trump and his, and his politics, but the fact remains that if you are born in, the Ameri in America, you are an American citizen. I don't think that's going to change under his regime. But in other countries, that's not always the same case. Uh, in Japan, for instance, just because you are born here doesn't mean you are Japanese. Both your parents are immigrants. You're not Japanese. You're whatever you your parents are. And so this becomes an issue for some people who um, are multiple generations uh, living in Japan, working in Japan, dying in Japan, but are denied Japanese citizenship. And then there's another layer of complexity when you have people who are in the situation who did not, by choice, come to Japan. You might be thinking to yourself, what do you mean by that? Um, Japan was a very powerful country, especially in Asia. It was the most powerful country in Asia for many, 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 many years. East Asia, I should clarify. And um, during this time, it conquered many, many, many countries, including Korea. And during its time, as, a, as um, Korea was a colony of, of Japan, um, Koreans were thought of as kind of like really good field workers, strong, strong backs, you know. And um, when... Uh, the Japanese discovered this. They decided that they would like maybe some Koreans to work their fields here in Japan instead of having Japan citizens citizens work the fields. They why not get why not get some strong back Koreans? And so many Koreans were, were brought over to Japan to do just that, to be field slaves. And in America, during our during this time, during the same kind of, when the same sort of acquisitions occurred, it was a very similar situation, slavery of Africans. Uh, but when, I'm not sure which amendment it was, but when it was passed that these people, these Africans were given uh, American citizenship, and their children were guaranteed citizenship, that is where the two histories diverge in terms of similarity. The Japanese did not, never, and will not allow these Koreans who were brought here not on their own accord, who were forced to come to Japan, forced to live in slavery, and now denied Japanese citizenship. Many of these Koreans do not even know they are Korean, Many of these Koreans believe they are Japanese and are, but are of Korean heritage, ancestry, 
these people are denied their their citizenship and um, it's a very very dark path very dark path and not not no one really really wants to talk about it if you want to f- bring up an awkward situation with Japanese people you can always ask more about the treatment of Koreans and nine out of ten times it's pretty awkward so yeah in America we tend to forget how lucky we are even in today's sort of tumultuous world it is still ten times better to be born in America than in any other country on earth I, and I promise you that I love Japan I think it's amazing it's truly amazing but I love America more. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. I'll talk with you soon.